You're welcome back to Nationwide. In 2009, Chernobyl Children International made history when a group of Irish volunteers built a terrace of seven houses, which became independent living units for 12 teenagers from Vesnova's Children's Mental Asylum. Now, this pioneering development actually led to a change in the law, which enabled young people with special needs to live a life of freedom and independence. All was going really well until last June when disaster struck because the terrace was destroyed. It was hit by a freak lightning storm. Now, obviously the residents were terrified, but thankfully they escaped harm. And recently, Marion Malone met volunteers involved in the project of rebuilding these houses in order to restore these young men's dreams. <laughs> Last June, extreme weather conditions in Central Europe caused a fire in the first independent living units built by Chernobyl Children International. I got an emergency phone call that Saturday. I responded by flying out with uh, our building manager, Fergal Flavin, and with the medical team, Fergal to, to assess the damage of the building to see if we could refurbish it, and the medical team to see if we needed to look after the boys emotionally, physically, psychologically and nothing prepared me for the devastation that we had to face. I'm here in the middle of Belarus, 170 miles from Chernobyl, and I'm here in the grounds of a children's mental asylum where children live and are detained from the age of four to 18. And if the children survive to the age of 18, they, they are normally sent to an adult mental institution, which is a terrible, terrible place. And to try and stop that drain into the adult mental asylum, we decided to pioneer an independent living project. And this really was the dream of all of the young men and living, women living here, was to have the safety and security of their own four walls, to be able to be living, breathing, free human beings. And unfortunately, that dream has been shattered as a result of a bolt of lightning which shot through the centre of the building. Fire went through the building and then following, we had a lot of fire damage. And we've just learned today from the authorities that the building itself is going to be condemned. We're going to have to knock it. We're going to have to replace it literally from the ground, foundations up. And I have made a promise here today to the young men whose fear is that they will be sent now to the adult mental asylum. I have said to them that their families in Ireland, as they were champions four years ago to make this building happen, they will be their champions again. They will raise the 250,000 euro. The builders will come out to make this their homes again. <laughs> See them there, they were all lined facing the gutted building with devastated faces, tears rolling down. And of course, the first question was, Edie, can you ask the Irish builders to come back and build us our houses? And we can't abandon them in their hour of need. And I suppose our appeal is to the hearts of the people of Ireland to say once more to rise up together and to help us to realise their ambitions and their dreams, to have that hope and home once more. It was a huge disappointment for the men who had overseen the Irish volunteers who had worked so hard to build the terrace four years ago. I didn't think it would be as bad as it was, but when I saw it, it just, you know, it tore the heart out of me after everything that everybody went through to build it, all the, the hardship and raising the money, you know, and what it's done to change the life of those kids just gone in the, in the space of half an hour. But in 2009, it was a new lease of life for the 12 young men when they moved into their new homes. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Uh, my house is your house. Aww. Actually, we made history in Belarus because it was the first of its kind. And as a result of the success of the terrace, um, it's now become the model. And in fact, we brought about a change in the law there to allow people with special needs to have the right to live independently. 
The inspiration for the independent living units came from the two young men affectionately known as Sasha Blonde and Sasha Black, both of whom grew up in the Vesnova Asylum. So the boys gave us that whole concept and now actually that is a whole development within the organisation for deinstitutionalisation, not just for the two Sashes and the lucky other lads in the terrace of houses, but for all special needs people that live in Belarus. So that is our long-term goal, but the inspiration and the vision has come from the two Sashes. Sasha Black with the black hair said to me, he said, Edi, where was God on this day? of the fire because he said we could have burned in the fire because himself and the other Sasha are completely wheelchair bound. They can do nothing for themselves. I said God was there and he will be there. He saved your lives. The other boys came. They showed the bravery and the courage because you're a family and he will be there again because he will send back the builders. The money will come. We'll buy the building materials and we will celebrate once more as we celebrated before. We will celebrate again in their beautiful homes. When the terrace was struck by lightning, the two sashes were thankfully rescued by the more able-bodied residents of the terrace. Sasha Blonde is pinning all his hopes on his home being rebuilt. If I if I didn't have a house, I, I have no, no life and no dream and no, no any, anything. Founded in 1991 to help children affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, the organisation is struggling to survive the recession. With just two full-time and four part-time employees in Ireland, its board of directors, including Aidy, work on an entirely voluntary basis and have never been paid. Volunteer Jim Kavanagh has made more than 50 trips to the Chernobyl region and his entire family is involved in the organisation. And, you know, we can't save the world, but those particular boys who were in that orphanage deserve something better. The money, I won't say it fixes everything, but for a charity, money is what's needed to rebuild the houses. It's as simple as that. You can get a certain amount of donation of building materials. Uh, you know, by nowadays it's going to be small, so you, you have to depend on donations. And I believe that the Irish people will come up trumps again. One and a half million euro of Irish donations have gone into Vesnova, where the rehab programme is centred. When the 2012 Rose of Tralee visited last March with her fellow Roses, she found meeting the children in the high dependency unit and the residents of the terrace a life-changing experience. When we went in there, we saw them the first morning just rushed over to them and just gave them all the hugs and they were running towards us and it was incredible. We went outside and saw the older boys who were there um, in these independent homes. It was just incredible to see how proud they were and how they felt how they'd become adults and they had this just independence. And they had their you know, own bedrooms, their kitchen, they even had internet. They had all of these things that you know normal teenage boys would have. Um, so for them to have to go back into, into the main building with the younger children, really I suppose is, their hope is gone now. They really need to get this back and, and to just find their independence and their, their pride again. Thank you very much for all of the <laughs> There is no shortage of workers eager to rebuild the terrace among the upwards of 1,200 volunteers in Ireland. We have the skills, we have the volunteers, we have any endless amounts of people that will come out and work with us for a week and for two weeks at a time. All we need basically now is money. If we can get the money together, we will build, rebuild this, these houses again and these young men will have a future again. To sponsor one house is €50,000. And I'm hoping that if we break it down like that, that people um, will, you know, will rise to the challenge. Families will come together. Um, you know, people will operate and have little fundraisers. The builders are already actually fundraising. The difference that this will make by even rebuilding even better, because we'll make them more eco-friendly, more highly insulated, and of course they're going to be larger, so they'll take in more residents. It just means we are restoring a dream. We are. You know, the, the guys' lives have been shattered enough, having lived in detention for 18 years of their lives, tasted freedom for four short years, lived the dream, 
to have that shattered, I want to restore lost and stolen dreams. And also for them to be able to reach their greatest potential, because these guys are intelligent, creative, funny, smart, extraordinary human beings who have survived against the odds so far. And I want them to live out their old age as happy as, as they can possibly be. So we want to give them back their happiness. The foundations of the new houses were finished just last week, something that had to be done before the harsh winter sets in. But the rest of the rebuild depends on future donations. Well, this is a challenge without a doubt. So whether it's one cent, 10 cent, or 20 euro or 10 euro, every single cent matters because we can build it brick by brick. We have made a promise to these boys that we will rebuild their dreams and their homes. We can't do it on our own, but with the people of Ireland behind us, yes, we can. We can do it. If you feel you'd like to help Chernobyl Children International with this project, well then their website address and also their phone number, which by the way is being manned at the moment, are on your screens now. And with that we've come to the end of this evening's programme. Then with the National Dean, Agus Kadishan on the Hainyar of Wurin, Iwahagwif, Agus